The Queensland land tax is off. In this video, I'm going to talk about what that means for the next 12 months. Queensland property market will go through interest rates, will go through affordability, will go through the exact suburbs that you should look at investing in right now, and we'll also look at CBA's view on housing debt. These four charts, these four elements will help you make the best decision whether or not to invest in Queensland and more importantly, where, exactly where to buy in Queensland. If you're interested, carry on watching. My name's PK and I help people build passive income through data, through the Property Investment Accelerator without needing a $15,000 buyer's agent every single time. And in this channel, we talk about the Australian property market, we talk about the Australian economy, and we talk about financial happiness. Smash the subscribe button, turn the notification bell on, give it a thumbs up, and let's go. So, context setting, what's happened previously, the Queensland government said, hey, we don't care all right, we just don't care if you have properties elsewhere in Australia, we're going to slug you for tax, okay, we're going to slug you for tax anywhere in Australia that where you hold properties according to your land tax threshold in Queensland. There's been massive backlash and they said that's really unfair because, you know, you have to care. OK, you can't just double tax people if they have properties in multiple states. So because of intense pressure, they've said, all right, we're going to not implement that policy anymore. You can have your properties interstate that does now not impact your properties in Queensland, your land tax bill in Queensland. That's a huge win, not only for property investors, right, but also for renters because if it had gone through, property investors were leaving Queensland, meaning less investment properties shooting rents up due to a chronic lack of housing supply or stock. Okay, so that's a good thing. But what does this mean? Like the, the more valuable thing is like, all right, wh what do I do about this? All right, what does this mean? The first chart that I want to share with you is right here. And this shows you the housing affordability and rental affordability, yellow and green respectively, for all states and territories across Australia. So you can see like 47.7% New South Wales housing affordability. That means that for an average family, it takes almost 50% of their income to service a mortgage. Like that's, that's not cool, all right? The next one, rental affordability, it means that it takes 26.3% of your income to service or to pay rent on a monthly basis. Okay, that's that's also, um, we could say, not cool. What I want to demonstrate, first of all, is that the worst is Tasmania, okay? So, you know, you don't want to be a renter in Tasmania right now. And then the second worst is New South Wales. Queensland is about the same as South Australia. Victoria is much better, as is ACT slightly, and Western Australia. Now, everyone goes on about rental affordability, housing affordability, respectively. That's green and yellow. But I just want to demonstrate something, and I've done this before. The key point that I want to make here is that 10 years ago, like in 2010, these numbers, these green numbers, we're at like 30% on average across the nation. So yes, affordability has worsened. These green bars have gone up. And if this land tax had gone through in Queensland, this, these green bars for Queensland would have been even higher because it's like almost no rental properties, people lining up across the block, around the block just for one property. That's not cool. Like I personally know some friends who are like, you know, really, really well off and they, they've tried to rent a property. They're happy to pay like $1,000, $1,500 per week for a property, but they're just not getting it. Like they have no bankruptcy, amazing incomes, you know, solid history, but there's just so much competition they're missing out. That's what would have happened if this land tax had gone through. It hasn't gone through, thankfully, and so I don't think this rental affordability will get as worse as it could. But there's still plenty of room on the upside on aggregate compared to 10 years ago for Australian rent affordability. Rents will still go up with or without this land tax. That is a fact. So where should you buy? As a Queensland investor, you want to capitalize on the fact that now Queensland has again become such an attractive place to buy an investment property to make money. Where should you buy? This is a recent article that I did 
for realestate.com.au supercharged Queensland suburbs where prices are set to boom next. Now I'm going to I'm going to tell you basically where to buy right now, okay? In in those basically those words. Thank you to Sophie Foster from Real Estate for the write up, okay? So basically it's saying Brisbane-based property investor me um, who owns X number of properties for which in Brisbane, Gold Coast, Cairns, etc., agreed that affordability and high yields would see parts of Brisbane and Queensland rate highly among investors. That's what I've just demonstrated at the beginning of 2021. You could throw a dart at Brisbane, you know, blindfold, and you would have made money, all right? And you would have made a lot of, lot of money. But things have changed. Now it's not should I buy in Brisbane, but where and what I should buy in Brisbane. And I'll go through regional locations in a second as well. So basically I'm saying I think the better opportunities in is in the townhouse dwelling types not so much like inner city but like 10 to 15 k's north and south of the river clayfield northgate tagum i reckon they'll outperform units because townhouses still have a land component land is scarce in these areas in like four to five years, you know, you're going to see the development cycle kick in as well. A lot of units being built. So you want to be really careful of buying units just because they're cheap doesn't mean you should buy them. Townhouses is where the affordability is at. Under $500,000, capital city, good cash flow, good yield, good growth. Okay. And even in, in Gold Coast, like people are saying Gold Coast is super expensive. It is. But townhouses, villas and places like Oxenford, you know, you can still buy, like I said, around 500K. Prices are continuing to rise. Vacancy is low. You know, rents are continue to go up. This is still really good time for property investors. Okay. I told you I'd tell you where to buy in regional. There's, you know, similar situation, like, you know, Frenchville, which is in Rocky, Rockhampton. You can buy something under 400k with a 6% yield in Rockhampton. Now, I'm not just saying to go buy there, you know, blindfolded parts of Frenchville, do flood. You need to be very specific on the right streets and the right pockets. You can do all that interstate with the right data tools and things like that. But regional Queensland, prices are rising, rents are rising with or without this land tax. But with the land tax repealed, there's so much more upside now. You know, there, there are people here on YouTube buyers agents, I like to call them copycat buyers agents, you know, you, you know who I'm talking about. And you know, they've publicly stated how bad of a, you know, place Townsville is to invest, but we've been investing in Townsville for like almost a year and pri like <laughs> prices have gone up literally like 20, 30, 35% in good parts of Townsville, non-flood, non-insurance premium hike areas, just really solid owner-occupier demand. So regional Queensland has so much opportunity and it's really hard to knock that back, you know, especially like if you live in Sydney because of the flight to yield. Everyone wants yield in a higher cash flow, in a higher interest rate environment. We want that cash flow. It's the flight to affordability and the flight to yield. There's very little chance that, you know, few suburbs that are still affordable won't go up. Buyers are literally flocking to these suburbs. You know, people will think, oh, property market's cooling down. I, I dare you, try to buy in Frenchville right now. It's gonna be hard, especially probably after this video. Okay, so I said interstate buyers viewed property prices in Queensland's absolute bargains, and even not even the land tax was going to stop that. Now that land tax has been repealed, I think regional Queensland is in for an elongated boom. Now, headline numbers from CoreLogic, you'll probably start seeing regional Queensland come down because they include places like Sunshine Coast, houses, top end of the market, Gold Coast, houses, top end of the market. Those really way down on aggregate average figures but these pockets that i'm mentioning and many others that clients are buying in they have so much potential some markets are still at the start of their growth cycle for certain types of properties so the long-term upside is excellent so we've established that additional land tax in queensland that terrible legislation has disappeared we've established that rents have opportunity to further grow we've established the right pockets the suburbs to be concentrating in we know that there is value there now let's really double down on the disinterest rate story we know that inflation is just starting to taper off what is monetary policy going to do? It's obviously underway. This is CBA here. The RBA joined the global monetary policy tightening cycle in May. 
you know, well ahead of their own guidance. Everyone knew I got that wrong as well. I was just following the RBI. I was saying it's probably not going to happen this year. I got that wrong. I'll be honest with that. The cash rate has now been increased by 225 basis points across May. Okay, June, July, August, and September is at 2.35%. Given the momentum on inflation, CBA expects 25 basis point right hike in October and November to peak at 2.85. Then they expect interest rates to hold for basically the first half of next year before starting to come down at the end or the second half of this year. Okay, this is really important because everyone always overshoots interest rate expectations. RBA cash rate forecast, okay, before they had a huge forecast, you know, the peak, um, you know, back in 15th of June where the world was falling apart. And then the most recent expectation is this purple line. Okay, it's come down. And then the CBA forecast expectation is even less. So the expectation kind of, you know, people overreact. It's like, you know, end of the world. And then things start to just mature a little bit. And in another video, I'm going to demonstrate how Europe is going to go into a recession. US is going to go into a recession. But the difference between Australian economy and property market versus those global peers. Everyone's talking about this fixed income home loans, right? The fact that there's so many fixed home loans coming to variable middle of next year. Check it out, you know, June to December next year. CBA reckons, CBA according, they're the biggest bank. They know this internal data. They think that these people have sufficient cash reserves. I'll do another video on savings rate and why we've got plenty of cash in the bank, even for people who are stretched that supposedly the media thinks are going to go bankrupt. Household debt to servicing costs are high. Household debt versus how much it costs to pay the mortgage off on a monthly, yearly basis is high. See this total amount, net of offset accounts? You, you gotta keep in mind you got money in the offset, right? You see this red line? You know, this is like March 2011, this is March 2023 as a forecast. This is the interest rate, cash rate, 0.1% where we started off 1.25, 2.5, which we're almost at at the moment even higher than current interest rates, 2.5, it's only back to what it was in and around 2010. So we've been here before. You know, it's not like we're an unprecedented, what is everyone likes to say, oh, it's different this time. It's like uncharted territory. It's like, no, even with interest rates going up again in September, sorry, I should say October, we've experienced this level of, you could say, mortgage stress before. And as I said before, CBA expects that to come down thereafter. There's no denying this green line on the right, household debt as a percentage of GDP. There's no denying that how Australia has the second highest household debt as a percentage of GDP. That looks at the liabilities side of the balance sheet only. There's no doubt that US is lower, UK is lower, New Zealand lower. So you're like, you know, well, interest rates going up, PK, Queensland, booming. Okay, I'm trying to piece together these puzzle bits, right? But you know, we've got so much debt. Yeah, that's on the that's on the liability side. But what about the asset side? If you look at it net of offset accounts, like this chart shows, this is true analysis, guys, like it's not what the media tells you. True analysis, net of offset accounts, including the asset side of the balance sheet, our PNL or our ability to service our debt is just fine. It's just what it was 10 years ago, all right? Of course, if interest rates go up another 2 or 3%, like we're royally screwed, <laughs> like don't get me wrong, but no one expects that. Apart from like really extreme people on YouTube or the media or clickbait or whatever, no one really expects that in Australia. Do they expect it in the US? Maybe. That's why I think the US is going to go into a recession if it's not already in recession. Australia is different. But hopefully that brought you value, guys. Land tax has been repealed. That terrible policy that was announced a few months ago in Queensland that's going to save Queensland investors or any investor in Queensland that has property outside of Queensland, thousands of dollars every year. That means more people are going to go into Queensland. We know rents can go up further. There still is a housing shortage. I've given you some of the best locations and across my channel, you know, I've given you so much advice on how to invest, where to invest, when to invest, especially in Queensland, right? Inflation is starting to taper down. I've demonstrated how monetary policy is still tightening, but it's probably not got too much to go. This is the time to seriously consider how to grow your wealth and how to beat inflation. Guys, hopefully that was valuable. Smash the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and most importantly, turn the notification bell on so you can see more of these videos. The most important real estate is not stuff in Queensland 
land. It's the six inches between your two ears. Level up. Invest in that first. Okay? Invest in that first. It will give you riv dividends. I'll leave links below to my podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, and also to the Facebook group with more than 20,000 people. Like, it's an amazing community. You can make money now. You can make money a year ago. You can make money in 10 years. You can make money in five years. You just need to know how and never trust anyone. Always learn to do it yourself. Catch you later, guys. Bye.